Hello everyone, today in our series of Docplex's KOL interviews, we have with us renowned oncologist couple Dr. Ajay Mehta and Dr. Suchitra Mehta who have established renowned Central India Cancer Research Institute, Nagpur. Dr. Ajay is an esteemed oncosurgeon and Dr. Suchitra is a well-known psycho-oncologist. Dr. Ajay is currently acting as the Organizing Secretary of the International Cancer Congress 2016. Dr. Ajay and Dr. Suchitra are also involved in actively raising awareness about cancer to Sadhana Charitable Trust. Thank you, Dr. Ajay and Dr. Sujitra, for talking with us today. Thank you. Can you please tell us why you established and how you established the Central India Cancer Research Institute? What motivated you to do so? Uh, well, uh, in 1987, I did my master's in uh, oncosurgery from the well-renowned Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai. And after that, I came back to Nagpur, which happens to be my hometown and uh, during that time we never had any uh, dedicated cancer institute uh, in the city so i thought i would start a dedicated cancer institute uh, and we started in 1987 and i started my practice that motivated me to give back something to the place from where i did my schooling that is nagpur i wanted to give it back to the city so we started this Central India Cancer Research Institute in 1987. Dr. Suchita, would you like to add anything to it? Yeah, uh, uh, as you mentioned that I'm a psycho-oncologist. So uh, this is a very, um, very upcoming branch. Nobody knew or nobody used to consider about the psychological aspects of the patient suffering from cancer. So uh, I think that uh, combining everything under one roof is very important for uh, proper cancer management. So Dr. Rajiv, we would like to ask you, you have been practicing for the, as a, you have been working as a surgical oncologist for like past three decades. So sir, would you please elaborate how the landscape of surgical oncology has changed for the past three decades and what are the factors that led to this change? See, if you see there's a dramatic change or a paradigm shift in the management of cancer over the last three decades. Uh, by paradigm shift, what I mean is a lot of uh, developmental changes in the treatment part, in the surgical part, and also uh, in radiation. So what we used to do about 30 years back, a radical surgery, now we get along with by doing a smaller surgery, at, at the same time, not compromising on the results. So that, this is a paradigm shift in the management which I am seeing over, uh, over the last 30 years. And again, with the advent of very good chemotherapy, the management has become very easy and very uh, patient friendly with less side effects. Now we have got targeted drugs with very less side effects. People are afraid of uh, chemotherapy and moreover of the side effects of the chemotherapy. So they shun the, the treatment. Now, uh, with uh, better understanding of uh, treatment over a period of th uh, three decades, this is a paradigm shift and I'm really proud that uh, even in a con developing country like India, we have these facilities now available. Dr. Suchitra, you are a known psycho-oncologist, so can you please tell us about some of the manifestations, psychological manifestations in cancer patients? See, uh, we all understand that um, uh, there is a lot of cancer awareness uh, being done in India as well as abroad. But still, whenever the patient is diagnosed with cancer, um, uh, the patient himself and the relatives and the family members, they all feel that his death sentence is uh, ready, his death certificate is ready. So still that apprehension is there. So um, uh, many times it, uh, we follow that, uh, we, we see that um, the patient, uh, patient uh, has the denial first and then there is anger and then there is depression, then, then after that there is acceptance to the diagnosis. So uh, all these stages uh, need not come in chronological way, but uh, sometimes the patients they uh, feel depressed first or they, they get angry first and then slowly there is acceptance to the diagnosis as well as to the treatment. 
so all these uh, things they involve the uh, psychology uh, uh, psychology of the patient and we need to handle that part also so side by side like medical treatment is going on or surgical treatment is going on side by side we need to uh, provide them the psychological care and psychological support to the patient as well as to the family of the cancer patient so what strategy would you suggest for the patient's well being and how important is the uh, integrated approach for the management of such patients in the integrated approach of the clinical therapy and the psychological counseling uh see now we uh, uh, we consider uh, i mean the aim of the uh, treating doctor is um, is giving quality of uh, quality of life to the patient it's not only treating the medical part but treating the patient as a whole so we give importance to the quality of life so this psychological aspect is also very very important because if we want to increase the quality of life uh do the rehabilitation of the patient then um in, uh, in addition to medical uh, surgical and other uh, treatment psychological support is also very necessary dr ajay you have been involved extensively in the treatment of various types of cancers and you have been involved in the treatment of especially breast cancer and the atlas trial so could you please highlight some of the findings of this trial and are these findings applicable in the indian scenario oh yeah it's a very good question uh, the, the atlas trial is one of the pivotal trials done by the oxford and uh, well it was initiated way back in 1995 and uh, uh, the randomization was completed in 2005 and interim analysis was presented in the san antonio breast cancer in 2013 which showed a very good uh, Uh, response in the way like uh, atlas as you know it's adjuvant tamoxifen long against short that is 5 years use of tamoxifen whether it is better or 10 years is better and the results are quite favorable as considered to the five uh, over a period of 20 years we are going to analyze it and uh, the final uh, report will be matured in 2018 which will be again published uh in uh, peer reviewed uh, journals as well as international conferences uh, uh what i have in a country like india where we see lot of young patients who are er positive that is estrogen receptors positive where the treatment of choice is tamoxifen which is an anti estrogenic drug and if it is proved that it is uh, 10 years is better than 5 years it will work wonders for the indian population as it is a cheap drug at the same time we will get very good results dr suchitra you have uh, dealt with patients of all age groups and gender so are there any distinctive characteristics that are unique to a certain age group or gender can you give some tips or recommendations to doctors to how to deal with such different kinds of patients yes we uh, we identify them as vulnerable group like uh, especially uh, the women and small children they have lot of psychological problems uh, especially in developing countries and uh, uh, for all hospitals i would say that those who are um, who are giving comprehensive cancer treatment cancer management i would say that psycho analysis psycho oncology uh, department uh, is very very necessary to do the psycho analysis and um, uh, detection of the psychological distress in cancer patients so um, there is awareness uh, we have separate department we have different uh, separate society for that it is a psycho oncology society it is international society based in us started in us now uh, most of the cancer institutes in uh, all over the globe uh, they have this department in india it's there is no much awareness about the psycho oncology but slowly yes it is developing so it is very necessary to when whenever the uh, patient comes to the specialist the oncologist uh, for the cancer diagnosis and the treatment at the same time the distress uh, distress uh, uh, assessment is also very necessary uh, by the psycho oncologist and uh, so that it can lead to proper management Dr. Suchita, you just mentioned that psycho oncology is an upcoming budding field. So, is there any training available for the new oncologists to specialize in this field? Yeah, few centers uh, in South they have, and uh, uh, 
uh, one in Delhi and at Tata Memorial Hospital Mumbai. They have few uh, fellowships and few training uh, programs for in psycho oncology as such. Now, uh, for the Nagpur as such, we don't have anything for Central India. So we are coming up with a very big cancer institute in the name of SCG NCHRI Cancer Center. Uh, to start with, we will start with 125 beds and it will have comprehensive setup like ev everything, all specialties under one roof. So psycho-oncology will definitely be a part of that. And uh, we will definitely start with the training program and um, not only in psycho-oncology, but uh, in surgical, medical, and uh, all uh, specialties. So psycho-oncology will, yes, will definitely be a part of that. Dr. Ajay, you are the organizing secretary of the International Cancer Congress. So can you please highlight the objective of such a huge conference and what are your expected outcomes from this conference? Uh, as I told you in the beginning, see there is a paradigm shift in the management of cancer and which is happening globally. And what we thought was, uh, if we can organize an International Cancer Congress in the heart of the country that is Nagpur, then it will be more accessible to all young doctors. And we have, uh, the highlight of this uh, conference is, we have made it complimentary so that young oncologists, budding oncologists, and even the postgraduate students, they get a chance to participate in this Congress and they will have interactions with the, uh, with the leading oncologists from all over the country as well as abroad. And they will get a chance to present their work and I'm really happy we have got a very good response. We have got about 12 international uh, well-renowned speakers, faculty for this conference, 100 national faculty and 1000 delegates from all over the country and neighboring countries they have registered. So main object is to make aware to this young generation, young, uh, uh, what are the nuances, what are the new changes which are occurring in the field of cancer. One last question to both of you. It is not very often that we encounter renowned doctors, couples who belong to the same speciality. So uh, could you please highlight some of the benefits and some of the drawbacks of being uh, working as a doctor couple and working in the same speciality? You want a diplomatic answer? <laughs> so you want a two answer. Two answer. Well, I don't think uh, there is any disadvantage. There is always an advantage. It is uh, complementary. If I am a surgeon, I am doing on, uh, cancer surgery, I need help from my other faculty members. Plus, obviously, if my wife happens to be a psycho-oncologist, it's a very, very big advantage. Big advantage. It's a multi-modality approach when we treat a cancer patient. And I, am, I, I, I will uh, be lying if I say that uh, uh, she is not complimentary to me. So, it, uh, I, I don't find any, any uh, instance where I find that uh, she is not helping me or she is inferior or onco psycho-oncology is not as uh, important as treating a cancer patient. Dr. Sachitra, would you like to add something to this? Yeah, it is. Um, I, I feel that there is always a better understanding um, if we belong to uh, the same specialty and uh, we can do a lot more for the patients. Thank you so much Dr. Rajay and Dr. Sachitra for speaking with us today. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. To stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews, please follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy Doc Flexing!